So good afternoon, uh, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on, uh, you know, with a, with a really interesting title, Pre-Cooling and Cold Chain is a Must, but what's the return and value for agribusinesses? Uh, my name is Michele Bruni. I am the Chief Commercial Officer of, uh, of Inspira Farms, and I am going to be the facilitator and moderator, depending as well on how the webinar evolves. Uh, of this of this webinar. Uh, for this webinar, we have uh, over four hundred uh, over four hundred registrants, and uh, and so far we have roughly a hundred that have already joined uh, perfectly on on time. Um, as we give a bit more time to more participants to join, uh, I would like to start thanking. Uh, the, the speakers that we're going to have a chance to meet uh, over the next hour, uh, the team uh, from Inspira Farms that has organized uh, the, the webinar, uh, and as well all our partners and customers that allow us uh, really to try and, uh, and, and bring uh, knowledge from many different parties uh, to the table and have uh, interesting discussions all together. In terms of approach for the webinar, we will try and focus uh, to share experiences and results on return on investments when uh, agribusinesses and, and fresh uh, supply chains adopt, uh, you know, appropriate uh, post-harvest technologies uh, and especially uh, cold chain. We're going to try and keep it as interactive as possible, both uh, among the speakers, uh, but as well with a, you know, with a hopefully fairly interesting Q&A session. Uh, some of the questions have already been collected uh, before, uh, before the webinar, uh, and that are going to contribute uh, to some of the leading questions. For the methodology of the webinar, we're going to have uh, exactly uh, 60 minutes. Uh, and I'm now going to start introducing uh, our, our speakers. Uh, and I will introduce them not at all in order, uh, you know, or, or in some order of importance, but following the orders in, in which they're going to intervene. Um, I would like to start uh, with, uh, with Glenn. Uh, Glenn, besides being, uh, you know, a, a fantastic hub and, and really consolidator of, uh, of relationship as a, over 20 years of experience in connecting uh, producers and agribusinesses uh, to, to high value markets and building that bridge uh, between the, the farming uh, and, and the requirements of, of, of takers. Uh, and um, thank you and, and welcome and welcome Glenn. Uh, thank the, you. Sec the second one is uh, Julian, uh, Mitch for friends. Uh, Mitch is the CEO of, uh, of Inspira Farms uh, with over 15 years experience in leadership and in running and growing very diverse businesses and and Mitch is really going to uh, try and initiate most of us uh, to the secret formulas of Inspira Farm uh, to generate returns for our customers which for Inspira Farms keep being uh, fundamental uh, to its mission. Uh, after uh, Mitch we're going to have uh, Yassin. Yassin is the CFO uh, of uh, Ifria Cold, uh, which is, in my opinion, the, for sure the most uh, interesting and, and quick growing uh, 3PL uh, in Africa. And we're going to try and, uh, and hear from Yassin as well what it means for, for a 3PL engaging uh, with fresh produce cold chain in, in Africa. And last but absolutely not least, uh, from, from Marco. Marco is the uh, the head of product uh, of Ispira Farms, and, and is really the brain behind the, the data that we're putting uh, to serve the agribusinesses and, 
uh, and supply chains that, uh, that we're working on. And we're going to try and, and understand more from Marco uh, how those data can help uh, or, or can uh, foster the return to our customers and, and generate uh, you know, more returns in the, uh, in the, for the future. Having said that, uh, you know, probably really in, in brief, not to preempt uh, the interventions of our speakers, uh, but a lot of, for a lot of agribusinesses, uh, it is fundamental connecting to those markets and to be able to do that, uh, the cold chain, the post harvest is uh, a fundamental element. And we're going to uh, try and understand why is that relevant and how that can be uh, done while generating uh, you know, sustainability, especially from the financial point of view. Having said that, probably is about time for me to, uh, to give the word to the speakers. And I would like to start, uh, I would like to start with you, Glenn. So, you know, in, in your experience, uh, I think that bringing consistent quality uh, and, and volumes with a determined shelf life and, and on time uh, to your customers is fundamental. Can you tell us you know, why post harvest and cold chain in particular is fundamental? Uh, and maybe provide us as well with, uh, with some examples. Thank you. Thanks, Michele, and uh, good day, everyone. Um, yeah, Michele, as, as the mantra of all post office technology is, it's all about temperature, temperature, and temperature. I think uh, it's a game changer, and without it, really any fresh produce business, be it for a local or an export market, depending on the production zone, is really going to have problems in sustainability and viability without a uh, effective and efficient cost chain. I think firstly that that the drive towards uh, the focus on cold chain technology has been by the market. Um, increasing quality demands, um, expectations and sophistication of the consumer, and of course, competition. Um, at the end of the day, you, you have to compete not only with the exact fruit type from different parts of the world, but counter season product uh, Southern African citrus will compete with European summer fruit. So if your quality is not there, there are multiple other attractions to draw the consumer's eyes and ultimately their dollars. What also the cold chain will allow you to do is, is to manage the supply and offtake of your product, extending its, its life, managing its ripening processes and its storage uh, potential which allows you to, as best as possible, manage the, the feeding of the market through oversupply periods and, and, and clearly the timing in terms of competitive product. Also, as uh, the world and, and volume has increased, the, the cost implications of air freight are becoming uh, ever more present, particularly in the last 18 months with the COVID scenario. And even prior to that, most products to be viable and competitive in, in the international marketplace were switching to sea freight. And that clearly is a much longer transit window from wherever you are in the world to your uh, shelf where the consumer is going to take the product from, in which case you have to be that much more efficient with your cold chain. Some uh, lack of efficiency or lack of effectiveness in a cold chain is not necessarily exposed in a 48 or 72 or 96 hour air freight transit, but under sea freight conditions, which can be anywhere between two and four weeks internationally, uh, if your cold chain is not on point, that product will be compromised. There's also just with increasing competition in the world, there's less and less margin for error in the horticultural production packing, grading, and exporting uh, supply chain. And without a quality and a product that has been through a cold chain and manageable, the, the impact on viability 
and the financial impacts are massive. So again, it just highlights how important it is. And then perhaps last of all, in today's world, the issue of health and safety and compliance and accreditation is becoming more and more prevalent. And the efficient cold chain, um, up-to-date technology, sustainability, uh, energy, particularly the focus on, on new energy saving uh, cold chain technology is becoming more and more critical in the consumer's eyes and an important part of the, the supply chain. Well, uh, thank you, Glenn. I think that, uh, you know, the, it, it is very important and interesting how you highlighted as well, uh, you know, the complexity of what happens uh, and needs to happen after the, the harvest of uh, of a product, and we're gonna we're gonna try and and highlight as well uh, later on during the webinar uh, what really needs to be in place. What are uh, you know the different partners or the different parties that need to support agribusinesses uh, to make uh, to make to make a success uh, uh, out of that. So thank you for this first intervention, and we're gonna try and come back uh, to to that.